of intelligence rather than a blind natural process, according to the ID proponents. And supporters of this idea basically saying they can detect scientifically rather than through faith the very footprints of a master designer inside our very cells. This is a cool idea, and you can see why many people would love to embrace it. It's far more appealing to many of us than the idea that we're the genetic cousins of mollusks. If there's a designer, we humans can continue thinking of ourselves as special and unique. If we involved, well then, we're just part of a very big family tree. An idea some consider to have a certain majesty of its own, but that others find objectionable. Now, the followers and proponents of intelligent design said we're not biblical creationists. We don't view Genesis as a history book or a science text. And uh, on the surface, intelligent design seemingly doesn't um, invoke any particular religion or scriptures. Uh, it pointedly avoids even attempting to identify the designer. It said that they can detect design without pinpointing the designer. And that doesn't have to be God. And maybe it's space aliens, who, who knows? They act, they actually, that's one of the things they say it could be. Now there's a nod and a wink to this because almost everyone who is attracted to this idea understands that the intelligent designer is in fact God, the God of the Bible. That's what the vast majority of supporters like about it. There's a reason why uh, at a recent ID event I attended at Biola University, it's a, an evangelical university in Southern California, there's a reason why those assembled were so enthusiastic about this scientific proposition of intelligent design, but were shouting amen uh, th th uh, throughout the proceedings uh, uh, over this supposedly non-religious idea. There's also a one secret document that was important evidence in the trial called the Wedge Strategy. And this is, uh, reveals a, an agenda behind the intelligent design movement that is distinctly Christian and fundamentalist. It seeks, uh, uh, according to the Wedge Strategy document that was admitted in court, to overthrow the scientific method and replace it with a theocratic approach. But by officially avoiding in its public statements any um, direct mention of the designer's identity, uh, advocates of intelligent design believe that they could avoid conflicts with the Constitution's wall of separation between church and state. So the Dover School Board, which initially had been talking about introducing a creationist uh, uh, lesson plan into the schools, realized that wasn't going to pass a constitutional test. And then they heard about intelligent design and thought, well, maybe this is a way to strike what a majority of the board members thought would be balance for our students. Because the leaders of that school board were worried about what would happen to their children if they only thought evolution was true and they didn't believe in uh, a, a creationist philosophy that they, their souls could be in jeopardy. That's what some of the board members feared. And so they felt they were doing a great service to their uh, school children and families by insisting that there be um, a, a, a balance in the science classes. They were further encouraged uh, after receiving legal advice that they might be undertaking an unconstitutional course when a, a law firm called the Thomas More Law Center in Michigan volunteered to represent them for free if they would institute an intelligent design curriculum and if they were sued, which would be almost inevitable. It's interesting that of all the law firms that would volunteer to defend this supposedly scientific proposition, it would be Thomas More, which calls its legal work its ministry and defines itself rather immodestly as the sword and shield for people of faith. As predicted, 11 parents sued the school board, saying ID was religion in disguise and another front in the culture war opened after this policy was instituted. Now this was the test case the opponents of evolution had been awaiting for decades. It held out the promise of changing our schools and how we teach science. It would tell us how trustworthy or untrustworthy scientists and science itself can be. And it had the potential for defining or redefining the meaning of religious freedom. Is religious freedom protecting our children from an inappropriate uh, religious teaching in our public schools? Or is religious freedom uh, allowing uh, uh, 
intelligent design to be taught to counteract what some viewed as the godless and irreligious theory of evolution. The community was divided over this question. It became very clear that the, the story behind Dover wasn't really just an argument over uh, where we come from. It was also about where we're going as a society. And that's what is so fascinating about this story. So I thought I'd read to you a couple little snippets from the book. And I'll set up the first one. It has to do with the very first person I met as I arrived at the trial in Harrisburg, where the Kissmore versus Dover took place. There was a fellow working the media gaggle, handing out flyers to an event in Dover that was going to balance the, what he viewed as the propaganda going, uh, being spread in the courtroom. And so he hands me this uh, little uh, invitation to the Evolution is Stupid event in Dover in the fire hall during the trial, which was a presentation that was going to be by Dr. Dino, who I previously mentioned to you. So I will just read a little with that set up. And the fellow who was giving out these flyers was named Reverend Grove. Reverend Grove appears to be keeping a mental list of all those he meets in the courthouse hallway, as well as those who testify in the case. A list of who will be headed to heaven when Judgment Day arrives, and who will, in Grove's estimation, be taking a more subtly direction. His world is a comfortingly or terrifyingly straightforward place. Either you believe in the literal truth of the Bible, that God created heavens, earth, and man in six literal days, or you were damned. Those Darwinists won't know what hit them, Grove says quietly. A pale auburn-haired woman walks stiffly past the reverend, looking straight ahead as she plunges through the doors into court. She is a former member and past president of the Dover School Board. But Grove does not offer her a green flyer or any sort of greeting. He just purses his lips and once again shakes his head slightly. It appears Casey Brown is on Grove's second list. That she has done good works serving her community and her church for many years doesn't much matter. She has, in the view of Grove and many other citizens of Dover, betrayed her own, taking the side of the godless ACLU, the evolutionists, the poisoners of young minds. Evolution is the road to atheism, Grove explains. Our children's future is at stake. Our children's future is at stake. This is probably the only statement Reverend Grove will make during the course of the trial with which Carol Honor Casey Brown can unequivocally agree. As she comes to court to testify about her long tenure on and rancorous departure from the Dover School Board, she can still scarcely believe it has come to this. A community divided, families divided, friends divided. Children have been ridiculed in the schoolyard for being open to the concept of evolution, taunted and mocked for being related to monkeys. A Dover High School student senior project, a 16-foot mural depicting the ascent of man from lower forms which had been donated to the school and displayed in a science classroom was taken down and burned, not by vandals, but by a school district official with the tacit, if not gleeful, approval of school board members. Casey, meanwhile, having expressed her opposition to introducing religious ideas into public school science classes, has received hate mail and crank calls and angry stares in the street, and now she sees it all spinning out of control. Dover is no longer just a small town, a small school district, a tightly woven community. Dover has become a cause. It is a cause for the Seattle Basic Discovery Institute, progenitor of the intelligent design movement and the seductively reasonable argument that schools should, of course, teach evolution, but they should also teach the controversy. It's a cause for the Americans United for Separation of Church and State and the American Civil, Civil Liberties Union, which has fought every significant battle over evolution in the country since, and including Scopes, and is facing dozens more across the country. It's a cause for the massive Pepper Hamilton law firm of Philadelphia, which has donated the manpower and monetary muscle to champion the view of parents who sued and who see teach the controversy as a stealthy method of injecting religion into the classroom instead of keeping it at home and in church. And it's a cause for the Michigan-based Thomas More Law Center, a law firm launched by the billionaire founder of Domino's Pizza with a mission to return religion to the public square, billing itself as the sword and shield for people of faith. 